I didn't know the natural texture of my hair until I was 17. I literally did not remember my natural texture of hair, but what I did remember is that experience of sitting between my mother's knees and feeling like my hair was a problem. I think a lot of conversations about hair fall short and they kind of put us in a problematic position. When we only talk about black women's hair and the things that we do without engaging white supremacy, then we pathologize black women. Good morning. How do you conceive of yourself? If you believe that black lives matter, then you see yourself connected to other black lives, yes? We've never just done hair. Our hair has always meant something. It's part of African culture. Your hairstyle can tell us a lot about who you are, whether it be your age, your position in society, how much money you have, how much leisure time you have, um, your spiritual position, like your hair communicates so much and it always has. Our hair communicates a lot now. I really learned how to braid on my own head. And one day my mom was like, wait a minute, that's not how I braided your hair. And I was like, I know. So I took it out in front of her and she was like, yo, you can braid hair. And it went from there. I would say it's a different feeling for different kinds of clients. Because as far as it like feeling special and feeling like a part of a movement, I feel that more with my professional clients because now they feel like, you know what? For years, I was scared to wear braids to corporate America. Where now it is, is you know, I'm wearing my braids to, you know, downtown Charlotte, working, you know, in corporate, and I'm wearing a proud, my fist up as I walk through the door. It's like, it's a feeling of like empowerment now. My braiding style and my creativity and being able to do stuff that is still professional and being braids, I feel like I'm part of that new movement and it feels good. So historically, there's been a feminization of whiteness and a masculinization of blackness, which means the standard for femininity has always been the white woman. Now, I didn't hear a word she said. I was, <laughs> I was looking at the James Brown wig. <laughs> the hair never lies. And so the hair is what communicates your proximity to whiteness or blackness. And when we start then saying to black women, in order to have this job, you have to wear your hair this way. In order to be seen as professional, you need to do these things without engaging how white supremacy completely informs that. Again, we pathologize ourselves, and I don't want to ever do that. Mm -hmm. Where we finish off in class with the name? With the name. We are the only race, we are the only culture of women who feel like we have to change this thing just really started impacting me on an emotional level to where I was like, I can't, I don't want to anymore. And so I stopped and it made me feel radical and it made me feel revolutionary at the time. And so I did. I remember standing in the mirror for hours playing with my hair because what I had imagined in my head and what I was holding in my hands were two different things that I had imagined my hair to be much quote unquote worse than it actually was. Hair becomes one reflection. But ultimately, how do I engage your entire self? Like, I need you to love all of your blackness, and your hair is but one reflection of that. And it's unfortunate, you know, that so many of us have been radicalized when we're just loving ourselves. It has to be a radical thing. We're just loving ourselves. <laughs>